Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can expand and contract shapes very accurately in Photoshop. Before we get started with this video, I just want to show you what the problem is because you might be sitting there thinking, well, you know, it's easy enough to rescale a shape. I don't know why she has bothered creating an entire video on this. And it is easy enough to scale some shapes. Circles and rectangles and things scale really quite well. But a shape like this will not scale. So let's see the problem. I've created this shape on a new shape layer and I'm going to make a duplicate of it. So I'm going to make an exact copy and we're going to fill this one with a different color so we can see things really clearly. Let's give it an orange color. And now I want to reduce the size of this shape. So I'm going to click on the Move tool. My shape layer selected. I'm going to start dragging in from the corner. Now I want it to actually scale from the middle. So I'm going to add the Alt key and that will scale from the middle. And I also want it to scale in the correct proportion. So I'll add the Shift key. And you can see already that there are some problems down the very bottom of this shape. The bendy bit on this callout is not inside the actual shape itself. And there is no way that I can scale it using that process to do it correctly. So when I grab it, as soon as I get my bendy bit somewhere near where it should be, everything else is falling out. But let's look at the solution I'm going to show you. This is the same cloud shape and this time I've been able to get an exact duplicate of this shape inside the existing one. So I'm going to show you how you can create this effect in Photoshop knowing that this is not something that is necessarily easy to do, although it looks like it should be dead simple. I'm going to just hide this document for now and I'm going to get rid of the duplicate of that shape because that obviously didn't work as a scaling option. I'm going to make another copy of this shape layer. So let's just drag it onto the new layer icon. So I've got two identical shapes here. And the top one, as I did before, I'm just going to change the fill on. So I'm going to select any of these shape tools to bring back up my fill options. And I'm just going to give it a color. So now we can see very clearly which is which of these shapes. Now the way that we're going to shrink it is to add a stroke to it. So I'm going to click here and just add a stroke color. And then I'm going to wind up the stroke. And you can see here that the stroke is on the inside of this shape. And that ideally is where you want it to be. So if you open up the stroke options, which you get to by clicking this down arrow where the stroke line is shown, it's really not obvious that this is, opens up an entire panel of things. But this is the option that you click to show this dialog. And then you'll want to go to the align options. And right now we have this align option selected. You can also select this one, which would put things in the middle, and this one, which would put the stroke on the outside. But we want the stroke on the inside, which is the first of these options. If you can possibly get that, then that's what you want. So now looking at this shape, what we want is the orange middle bit and not the green stroke. You can see that the overall shape is exactly the same size as the blue one was originally. And what we want to do is keep the orange and trash the green. Well, we can do that by first rasterizing this shape. We can't do it as we would in Illustrator any more effectively than this. But I'm going to right click this shape and I'm going to rasterize it. So we're turning it into a bitmap. Now I'm going to go and get the magic wand tool. And I'm just going to click in the middle here because I want to select this entire shape. And now I'm going to open the Paths palette. You can get to that by choosing Window and then Paths. And if you've never done Paths before, don't worry. This is not as scary as it might seem. What you're going to do is click on this option here. And what it reads is Make Work Path from Selection. So what we've done is we've selected all this orange area and we just want to make a path from it. I'm just going to click here and now we have a work path. So now we can just trash our shape layer. We don't need that any longer, but we will need a new layer for our new shape. So just created a brand new layer for the new shape. And you can already see probably on the screen here that the path is marked out so we can see exactly where it's going to go. To fill this path, we can do one of two things. We could just fill the path with the current foreground color. But I like to turn this back into a shape. And to create a shape from this path, I'm going to go to Layer and then New Fill Layer, Solid Color. Click OK. And then I'm just going to choose my color now. 
let's go with this red color and click OK. And now what we've got is two shape layers. We've got a shape layer that is blue and a shape layer which is this red color. We've also got a work path here which we can get rid of by just dumping it on the trash can. So here's the solution. The solution is to take your shape and duplicate it. Add a stroke to it on the inside. If you can possibly get it to sit on the inside, that's where it should be. And then you want to rasterize that shape. Select just the middle bit, which is the bit you want. Convert the selection to a path and then make it back into a shape. So we've got two shapes now and they're nested inside each other and it looks pretty good. Now if you want to do some additional work to this, you can do so. Let's go to this color fill layer and let's grab hold here of the direct selection tool because that allows us to select any of the anchors on this path. So we could, for example, go in here, grab hold of this point here and adjust it. So you could fine tune this shape if you want to by just adjusting the handles that are controlling the inside shape. Now I haven't done the world's best job there, but I'm sure that you'll do a much better job than I have done. But you can see that you do have anchor points and they can be adjusted. So you can perfect it, but you don't have to redraw it because Photoshop's done most of the work for you in creating this inside shape, which is a direct shrinking down of the original shape. Now it's also possible to go the other way and if you're fairly skilled with Photoshop you'll already know what I'm about to do. But if you aren't and you want to watch it, let's go and do that. So I'm just going to hide my smaller shape now. I'm going back to my original shape and I'm going to make a duplicate of it. And again I'm going to add a stroke to it. So I'm just picking a stroke color and then I'm going to increase the stroke weight. But what I want to do with this stroke is I want to place it outside the shape. So I want it to add to the shape. So then when I rasterize this layer, I have a larger element. This time, instead of clicking on the inside, I'm going to click using the magic wand tool on the outside. And then I'll choose Select and Inverse. So now what I have selected is this new larger shape. I'm going back to my Paths panel here to make a path from my selection. I'm going to trash this layer because I don't need it any longer, but I do need a brand new layer which I've just created for my new shape. And then I'm going to choose Layer, New Fill Layer, Solid Color, click OK, go and get a color for it. This time let's choose a sort of yellow color so we'll be able to see it when we put it all together and click OK. So this is a shape layer, so is this one, so is this one. So I'm going to turn them all back on and then move them into position so that we can see our layered shapes. And you can see that Photoshop has done a pretty good job of creating this effect for us. Once we know what it is that we can't do by just sizing a shape using its sizing handles, but we do now have a process for creating multiple different size expanded or contracted versions of an original shape. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at ProTechWoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.